All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, today I'm just going to do a quick video on just how to set up a little activity you guys are going to be doing, the ball and ramp average velocity. The whole purpose of this activity is for us to kind of practice uh, measuring average velocity of an object. All right, so here is the goal uh, for you guys to here to find out um, here, the little challenge. All right, you guys, uh, of course, this is all going to go in your notebook. Um, if you need to pause it to write it down, that's fine. But I'm going to start explaining it here. All right. Uh, determine the relationship between the number of books and the average velocity of a ball. All right. Down a ramp. So here's what you guys are going to be doing. You've got two variables here. You're going to have a number of books and your average velocity. So let me talk a little bit about the setup here. You're going to have your ramp, right? And we are going to roll that ball down that ramp. Now remember, the ramp has different position markers on it. It's got a zero meter, it's got a 1.1, uh, sorry, a positive one meter, and a positive two meters. What we are going to try and see is, what we're trying to figure out, is the relationship between the number of books under it, and that's gonna create this incline, right? I'm not going to make you measure the incline with the protractor. That'd be annoying. I'm just going to do the number of books stacked underneath one side. What's the relationship between the number of books and the average velocity? Now, I don't have a tool that measures average velocity, but you know how to calculate average velocity. So all we got to do is roll down the ball, see how much time it takes to go, say, either one meter or, say, two meters. All right? Let's just do two meters because it makes it easier. If it, how long it takes to go two meters, that would give us our average velocity. We can change the number of books to do that. So we are going to do independent variables, your number of books. So you're going to choose the number of books you're going to put underneath it. You're going to see what the dependent being the resulting average velocity that you're going to have to calculate. So you're actually collecting position and time so that you can calculate average velocity. All right. Now for your data table, all right, your data table, you're going to have to have, uh, we're going to do five different data points. So of course, in your data table, you're going to have, uh, you know, the number of books, it being your independent, that's the one you're going to choose. You're going to have to find out what the change in position as a roll down, let's say two meters. What's the change in time? How long did it take to go that two meters? And then from there, you can calculate the average velocity. All right. So in the end, even though you needed to collect these two, we're going to be comparing this one from this one, All right? Because those are our variables. So we're going to be graphing this versus this. All right. So. You're going to do five different data points. You're going to pick uh, the number of books. May I recommend uh, doing like two books at a time? Just one book doesn't really make that much of a difference, but if you do two, or, you know, we'll see. Well, if we have enough books. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a graph. Again, we're going to be graphing the number of books and the average velocity because that's our independent dependent variable. Remember, independent goes here and your dependent variable goes there. And then you're going to make a conclusion. All right, the conclusion is going to be pretty straightforward. Remember, what is the relationship between the number of books and the average velocity? Is it a constant relationship or is it changing? And how do you know? All right, that's going to be it. All right, so you got to set it up. Otherwise, good luck. And have fun figuring it out.